Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Magnanimosity. We are a grassroots organization committed to unleashing the human spirit and maximizing the potential of future generations. This is part five in a 10-part series entitled, Oh Yes We Are, Unleashing the Human Spirit. Please feel free to visit us at magnanimosity.webs.com. That's M-A-G. N-A-N-I-M-O-S-I-T-Y dot W-E-B-S dot C-O-M. Number four. We may as well just ignore the problem, the scope of which is simply overwhelming, besides there is simply no solution. This is perhaps the most counterintuitive statement of all, not to mention the fact that it goes against everything that made this country great. Did the first settlers view crossing the country in covered wagons under the constant threat of Indian attack, starvation, and extreme adversity as a problem? No. Did the multitudes of individuals that left England, Europe, and indeed all parts of the world in search of religious and personal freedoms view their struggles as an insurmountable problem? Absolutely not. Why then are we so willing to ignore a problem that so profoundly affects every man, woman, and child. We have indeed become lazy in our quest for greatness, and this is a direct result of our inadequate upbringing. The solutions to our problems are not only possible, they are in fact essential for our very survival. The greatest poem ever known is one all poets have outgrown, the poetry innate untold of being only four years old, still young enough to be a part of nature's great impulsive heart, born comrade of bird, beast, and tree, and unselfconscious as the bee, and yet with lovely reason skilled, each new paradise to build, elate explorer of each sense, without dismay, without pretense, in your unstained transparent eyes, there is no conscience, no surprise. Life's queer conundrums, you accept your strange divinity still kept. And life that sets all things in rhyme may make you poet too in time. But there were days, O oh tender elf, when you were poetry itself. Ladies and gentlemen, what happens to this wonderful beginning when we were all poetry itself? How do all these tender elves become murderers, drug addicts, physical and sexual offenders, cruel dictators, morally degenerate politicians, how do they become the walking wounded? We see them all around us, the sad, fearful, doubting, anxious, and depressed, filled with unutterable longings. Surely, this loss of our innate human potential is the greatest tragedy of all. The only thing that makes man imperfect is the fact that he simply does not realize that he is. Either we are perfect or God is not. Why is this? Shame, guilt, worry, boredom, hostility, greed, selfishness, codependency, separation anxiety, low self-esteem, fear of abandonment, selfishness, cruelty, alcoholism, addiction, depravity, sexual deviancy, feelings of isolation, loneliness, fear, anger, hatred, malice, depression, sociopathy, trust issues, narcissistic disorders, intimacy dysfunctions, non-disciplined behavior, obsessive compulsive disorders. I could go on and on and on. When, where, how, and why? Did we trade in love, joy, peace, brotherhood, magnanimity, generosity, empathy, forgiveness, and gratitude for their above-mentioned ugly opposites? Where is the love? Self-esteem, where did it go? We have already briefly discussed the damage caused by physical abuse. Certainly, we can all agree that the physical abuse of a child gravely damages the child. However, the results are far-reaching and tend to be self-perpetuating. Hitler was chronically beaten in his childhood. He was humiliated and toxically shamed by a sadistic father who was the bastard son of a Jewish landlord. Hitler reenacted the most extreme acts of cruelty on millions of innocent people. Hitler's mother did not love her son. If he had been loved, 
he would have been capable of love, which obviously was not the case. Hitler's mother lost her first three children within one month. Her anxieties and depression were communicated directly to Hitler as a baby, therefore had a disturbed relationship with her son. She unconsciously delegated Hitler to rescue her from her husband, thus Germany comes to symbolize his mother and must be saved from the Jews, his father. Hitler was a perfect example of the fact that criminals are not born, they are created. Children who are physically abused in an attempt to survive the physical and emotional trauma disassociate. They lose their sense of self and in many cases adopt the identity of the perpetrator. This accounts for the continuation of the cycle of violence. Without a sense of self, there could be no self-esteem. Oddly enough, one of the most insidious, prevalent acts of child abuse has been going on for thousands of years and perfectly illustrates our collective insanity and failure to correctly blatantly destructive behavior. Not only is it legal, it is in fact the norm. Why do we continue to condone and encourage this act of barbarism with all of its well-documented destructive consequences? And to add insult to injury, it is carried out by the very person entrusted to love, nurture, and protect us, our mother. The veil of ignorance and denial must be lifted if we are to maximize our human potential. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next part of this series, we're going to uh, examine circumcision. And this concludes part five in a 10-part series entitled, Oh Yes We Are, Unleashing the Human Spirit. Please join us tomorrow for part six by using the keywords, Unleashing the Human Spirit. And again, please visit us at magnanimosity.webs.com. That's M-A-G-N-A-N-I-M-O-S-I-T-Y dot W-E-B-S dot C-O-M. And thank you.